Hey everyone, welcome to the KB6 quick tutorial on how to squat better with a kettlebell. <clears throat> so let's start simple. Here are a couple tests you can do to understand where you should be squatting from, the width of your squat and the depth of your squat. Now, if you don't know, if you do a big, strong standing jump where you land is typically going to be the ideal position for your feet to be in when you squat. Now, this is not an exact science. You can give or take a centimeter of width here and there, a little bit of extra turnout or perhaps turning in. But typically, where you land is going to be a strong position for you to exert force because you've just caught all of your falling weight in that position. So that's your first, first test to do. The second test for you to do is in the prone position, that is in the box position, forearms on the floor, and I want you to walk your forearms back, pushing your hips towards your heels. You're going to go as far as you can while maintaining a neutral spine. As you'll see, there is a point at which you get something called a butt wink. We do not want to squat to where your butt tucks underneath you. The old thought process of every squat needs to be asked to grass is just outdated. If you have deep hip sockets, then asked to grass squatting is not for you. If you have a shallow hip socket, the Polish hip, there's many different terms for it, then deep, hip, deep squats are for you. That's great. There's no better or worse, this is about your born anatomy. So let's not fight it, let's help you work to within the limitations or strengths that you have naturally in your physique and in your anatomy. Lastly, you can lie on your back and pull your knee towards your armpit. If you can get your knee all the way to your armpit without losing shape in your hips and getting a tucking sensation through your hips, you've got a shallow hip socket. If you, like me, pull your knee towards your armpit and you stop just past 90 degrees, you've got a deep hip socket and your femur is literally knocking into the top of that hip capsule and changing the shape of your pelvis or changing the orientation of your pelvis. So now that you have an understanding of where you should be squatting and the kind of depth you should be aiming for, let's get into how to make the squat the best movement possible for you. When you pick that kettlebell up and grip the handles with two tight fists, you create strong neurology throughout your entire body. So I don't want any lazy hands. Grip that handle tight and drop your shoulders away from your ears. What this is going to do is tighten up your lats. Because with the weight up here, your back is in charge of carrying that load. So holding the kettlebell lazily over your chest and not thinking of the upper body upper body function in this exercise is missing out on half of the work grab that kettlebell pull it towards you like you're trying to pull the kettlebell through your chest and then drive your shoulders away from your ears we've just created a ton of stability through your shoulder girdle and down your back by engaging these big sails of muscle your lats in this starting position, what you're then going to do is grip the floor with your feet. I want you to think of your feet like they're eagle's talons. And you're going to grip from three points of contact. Your big toe, your baby toe and your heel are going to squeeze into the floor and create torque tension. Like you're trying to screw your heels into the floor. Then with that kettlebell nice and tight against your chest, you're going to drive your knees apart like you're trying to tear the floor in half as you drop your hips back and sit into a squat. Now, there should be way more tension in your body than what you've done previously. My eagle's talons are gripping the floor. I've got that kettlebell pulled into my chest and I've driven my shoulders down away from my ears. Here, I'm going to separate the floorboards underneath my feet as my hips drop back and then squeeze my glutes as I come up into a strong quad contraction, glute contraction, and abdominal brace. <sighs> Your breath is a big part of maintaining that tension. So the goblet squat done in this way should feel like a full body exercise. Grip the handles tight, 
drop your shoulders down your back and pull that kettlebell through your chest. Then spread the floorboards as you sit and squeeze your glutes as you come up using your breath to accentuate core tension. That is how you do a goblet squat and the depth you're aiming for is predetermined by those first tests we started with at the beginning of this video. We could make a squat video very long and very detailed. We could go into ankle mobility, hip mobility, <coughs> knee position, back position, torso angle. There's a ton of things that we could go into. But simply speaking today, that's how you do a goblet squat with a kettlebell. I hope that's helpful. Hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, share this video if it was helpful to you because it costs you nothing and helps me a ton. Leave a comment below for what you want to see next. Ugh. <sighs> <sighs>